What's going on everybody? My name is Mike Cortez and I'm the founder of Digital Empire Marketing. Today I want to talk to all the real estate agents out there, brokers, anybody in the real estate world and give you some ideas on how to make your social media content bring value back to your investment, right? So one thing I love to say and I've, I say this almost every video is you don't know what you don't know when it comes to marketing and that's not your fault. You're really good at what you do in the real estate world but marketing tends to be something that is a, its own job on I mean honestly it's my whole my whole business is based around marketing and it's more than enough for me to focus on so as a real estate agent or broker anybody in the in the world of uh, of real estate how do you make your social media content relevant how do you actually grow followers and people that want to follow you because the real estate world is a, a completely competitive uh, industry right so you have to always be on top of your game ahead of the curve, doing things that are very new, un, you know, kind of untapped, uh, essentially. And that's where social media is still kind of bringing you a lot of value. So when it comes to your, your social media, I have five tips. And it all revolves around building a stronger following. Keep this in mind while you're going through the tips. One thing to always remember is if you are not providing value and all you're trying to do is sell, Here's a, a new house on sale. Here's another open house opening. Here's another, you know, just sale, 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 sale. People will not follow you. They will not want to keep following you. They're going to unfollow you, maybe even block you to a certain degree if all you're doing is trying to force sales down their throats. So keep that in mind. Be very cautious with your social media as far as what is my follower, what is my customer thinking when they see this ad? Because I understand you want to make sales, you want to grow your business. But you have to be very um, empathetic to your followers. And how do you keep it interesting for them? And I'm going to talk about those tips right now. All right, tip number one, create Facebook ads that build curiosity. So what this means is how do you use the real estate uh, world and try to build some curiosity around, I wonder what my property is worth. Find out what your neighbor's property sold for next door. And you can target them based off of zip codes. Um, you can use, let's just say, uh, infographics, ebooks, videos. Here's five things that every first home buyer makes the mistake on. Something that builds curiosity. I want to find out what they know that I don't know. This is the customer talking. So what is it that you can do to build curiosity to get them to click and visit your website just to build some kind of uh, interaction with them? Number two, creating eye-catching Facebook and Instagram ads. So the thing about, uh, let's just say these platforms is you're competing with so many different types of individuals. I mean, you're, you're not just competing with other real estate agents. Keep this in mind. You're competing with Target. You're competing with Amazon. You're competing with local businesses. Everyone is fighting for the attention of your prime demographic. So how do you stand out when it's others that are trying to take the attention away from you as well? It's very competitive. So this is where you would invest into higher quality ads, photos, videos are always the best way to go. Um, find a videographer in your city that makes beautiful real estate videos that are very captivating. They keep people interested. Maybe you do uh, home reviews or maybe you do home safety reviews. It could be anything that, that's uh, relevant to a new home buyer and make sure that the quality is top notch. Number three, use familiarity to your benefit. So the reason why I love this, this tip is, let's just say as an example, Zillow. Zillow is a huge uh, presence in the real estate world and they are virtually everywhere, right? So how do you compete with the Zillow? And usually the, what I like to recommend to my real estate agents is use landmarks, use references, use icons that are very specific to your area. And by doing that, you stand out immediately ahead of Zillow because Zillow is trying to do a more generic approach. They, they can be as customized as possible, but they don't live in the same city as you. They don't understand your city, your people as much as you do. So use certain landmarks, certain things that you know your surroundings will understand, or at least it'll catch their attention. And that's a way to build some familiarity and build good uh, emotions with your followers. All right, number four. Provide value in your social media content. This is probably the most important one out of all the five tips. So please keep, keep this in mind. 
when it comes to your, your social media, you need to provide value. If, if you follow Gary Vaynerchuk, which I know a lot of real estate agents do, he has a famous quote, which is jab, 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 right hook. Essentially what he's saying is on social media, you need to give value, give value, give value, then go for the sale. So when you have that in mind, how do you not, how do you keep your, your social media from being spammy? And what I mean by that is earlier I said, uh, don't be selling all the time. Try to build some relationship, build some value with them. So you could do things like home buyer tips, uh, open house toolkit that you should bring with you. Um, 10 things every first, uh, let's just say newlyweds make the mistake on with homes. Uh, anything that has to do with uh, selling your home, tips on selling your home for the highest price possible. Whatever it is that your expertise can provide value to with your customers, utilize as much of it as possible. And I know a lot of people are very uh, nervous and skeptical about giving away free information like that. But when it comes to online, you're not there in person to build that relationship. You can't have these conversations online like what we're doing right now. You're watching my video. I'm tr trying to provide you value. Value first. Let's, I want you to see I know what I'm talking about and that I can provide you value that's going to help your business grow. And from there, it just grows exponentially. So always provide value first. It doesn't mean you can't sell. Just keep in mind that you have to wait a little bit before doing the sale, before going after them with a hard call to action. Um, hey, come in for an open house type of thing. All right, number five. So this is the last one for a reason. Um, this is after you've built a relationship. You want to create some type of call to action when it comes to your ads or social media content. So what is a call to action? Um, it's pretty simple. It's let's say sign up for this giveaway for the chance to win a, so let's just say a Ecobee thermostat, smart thermostat, or sign up for this um, buyer's guide on your zip code. Sign up for this infographic on how to make sure you buy the best house in your industry. I'm sorry, in your, uh, let's just say pay grade. Um, five luxury homes that are under $150,000 in San Antonio, Texas, right? So how do you provide a call to action for them to sign up, give you their contact, contact information in exchange for something of value? So that's where you can start the conversation of giving them a phone call, retargeting them with email, retargeting them on Facebook. This is starting the, the process of that relationship I was talking about before. So if you don't have a call to action, then you're kind of leaving a lot of business on the table and that's not a good idea. So that's the five tips that I have for you all. Um, make sure to like, subscribe, put on the notifications. I'm gonna be doing these every week. So make sure you're consistent and keeping up with it so that you can stay ahead of the curve.